The key to reducing problems related to chronic tinnitus and eventually finding relief from tinnitus is having a good understanding of what tinnitus actually is. Our brain works with a stream of nerve signals perceived as signs of tinnitus presence. This video can change your life by helping you understand the true nature of your enemy, tinnitus. From our experience working with upper management, business owners, and individuals holding top positions within entire corporations, we have gained a wealth of experience in providing them with support through the right therapies and our expertise. With a team of highly qualified specialists, we are fully equipped to limit and eventually eliminate tinnitus symptoms and offer our patients the opportunity for a life free of stress. Our approach involves instructing them to manage challenges in their professional and personal lives. Not all clinics specializing in tinnitus therapy will have the personnel and professionals to work with this type of patient we are discussing. Still, we strongly recommend talking to the family physician to find a good psychologist or psychotherapist to supplement the TRT and CBT tinnitus therapy. Proper therapy or treatment program should have all the necessary elements, and they should provide the patient with a complete changeover process based on providing tinnitus sufferer with knowledge and abilities, allowing them to be much more efficient at work and much happier at home. With life coaching elements based on neuroscience and psychology, this program should be highly personalized and designed to broaden perspectives, teach patients all important life and work skills, and lead toward finding balance, happiness, and a sense of purpose. Tinnitus presence should be treated as a starting point. With the sound and the ears and all other symptoms of long-term stress and anxiety treated as a warning signs indicating a need for a change. At Metro Hearing and Tinnitus Treatment Clinic, we have proudly used advances in neuroscience for many years and many treatments, including complete tinnitus treatments and even low-cost or distant patients' tinnitus therapies. One of the main reasons for studying this field of science comes from understanding that progress and much greater knowledge of the human brain and even body functions come from learning more and more about the importance of the human brain and the processes taking place in what we call the human mind. Obviously, advances in computer science and a growing number of universities and scientists involved in this research have resulted in a much better understanding of some of the brain functions science was only partially aware of for many years. So what does neuroscience have to do with tinnitus? Well, actually quite a bit. This is not even because of Professor Pavel Yastrebov's fundamental work on tinnitus retraining therapy by implementing the neurophysiological model of tinnitus and other conditions such as hyperacusis or misophonia. Current research is showing us and confirming the value of many very promising and used approaches and therapies. Still, it offers new and important facts playing a significant role in our understanding of the tinnitus process as a part of what seems to be a crucial aspect of brain functioning. So please sit down, relax and watch our video. This one really can change your life and give you what is known to be priceless, knowledge and understanding of what tinnitus really is and why it is so important to treat tinnitus' presence seriously by searching for the best solution to remove it from the sufferer's life. Please subscribe to our channel and remember to give us a like to encourage us to do even more work to present you with the best proven tinnitus therapies or treatments and the single most important gift of knowledge. Talking about this part of our work, we are very pleased to inform you that we've got some fantastic news to share for all tinnitus sufferers in Southern Ontario. Our clinic is currently providing low-cost consultations for a limited time, specifically for those of you who are suffering from severe or catastrophic tinnitus. To make an appointment, use a link to our website or call our clinic directly. Also, we have decided to offer a special one-in-the-clinic-visit-only program to all patients whom we refer to as distant patients coming from various locations in Canada and the U.S. 
especially when local professional tinnitus treatment clinics are not accessible to them. This program is just a continuation of what we used to do for many years and is built on the successful implementation of the most effective therapies used in our clinic. But going back to the topic of this video. There are many tinnitus causes and onset triggers. Still, the common understanding of this condition's nature almost always includes what we call preconditions. Some major ones are based on what is happening within the auditory system, even if this sort of distortion is not connected or is not based on hearing loss presence. This is one of the reasons tinnitus is more common in the older population when nervous system and brain degenerative processes become increasingly visible, often leading to the onset of various medical conditions. Hearing loss, especially what is the most common and known as sensorineural hearing loss, is one of the most common signs of the degenerative process affecting the auditory system. The prevalence of just hearing problems reflecting changes within the auditory system in the Western world has, due to the aging of the population, doubled over the past 30 years. This also confirms the role of noise-induced hearing loss as an important factor known to worsen over time in addition to age-related hearing loss. Now, what is the tinnitus place in all this? You may want to watch some of our videos to refresh your knowledge. Tinnitus is caused by abnormal electrical activity in parts of the brain, and it can be actually seen by using what is called functional MRI. Now it is time to tell you that this abnormal activity in your brain is generating very high levels of anxiety. It is changing how we act. For most tinnitus sufferers, it causes a variety of problems, such as poor sleep quality or even the inability to fall asleep. So yes, tinnitus can be caused by more than 200 factors in our lives, or linked to our health and many other things. The symptoms may be less or more severe, but there is always this abnormally high activity in some parts of the tinnitus sufferer's brain. The main risk factors for developing tinnitus or hyperacusis include hearing loss, elevated levels of anxiety, and long-term stress, old age, and many others. These factors include various preconditions, such as certain medical conditions and their side effects, as well as genetic predispositions encoded in our DNA. For some time now, some research findings have been published worldwide, indicating chronic subjective tinnitus has many similarities with chronic pain. So, as we can see, tinnitus is now considered a very important condition. It is not only treated as a separate set of symptoms connected only to the auditory system's internal problems, but also shares similarities with symptoms or manifestations of other conditions. This common understanding of tinnitus symptoms as a warning signal from the brain is gaining new meaning. As we've emphasized in our clinic, tinnitus should be taken seriously, not only due to its annoyance and its impact on our lives, but also as a potential indicator of more serious underlying health issues. This is why a proper medical investigation is always recommended and some specialists, such as ear, nose and throat specialists, should be involved in this investigation. Now, there is one more valid question. What about the involvement of psychologists or other specialists? We know very well that Although sometimes called an old age disorder, tinnitus has emerged as a serious public health issue worldwide in the last 20 to 30 years, affecting approximately 50 million Americans in various age groups. It is also well known that approximately 10 to more than 20% of individuals who experience tinnitus report severe symptoms that drastically reduce their quality of life. Among American veterans, for example, Tinnitus is the number one service-related disability and impacts more than 2.17 million veterans overall. 
There are more and more research reports published almost every day indicating some other tinnitus-related findings which indicate not only changes in the neuronal networks caused by the tinnitus presence, but also some other factors having an effect on the tinnitus onset, which were not treated seriously or not even recognized at all not that long time ago. For example, stress is often attributed to a cause of tinnitus, and we often see in the clinic that patients complain that their tinnitus worsens after stressful situations. The evidence that stress is related to tinnitus is based on studies showing high numbers of psychiatric conditions in tinnitus patients. About 10 to 60% of chronic tinnitus patients suffer from depressive disorders and 28 to 45% from clinically relevant anxiety symptoms. According to the authors of Tinnitus, the Sound of Stress, it has been frequently observed that many tinnitus patients report psychological or psychiatric distress before or during the onset and evolution of tinnitus. Some studies using stress questionnaires on tinnitus patients found a very high prevalence of self-reported stress levels. In the research paper published by GOMA, we learned that among 100 patients with tinnitus, only 25 didn't have stress, 44 had mild to moderate stress, and 31 had severe to extreme stress levels. There seems to be a cause and effect relationship between tinnitus and stress. Stress is often attributed as a cause of tinnitus, and we almost always see in the clinic that patients complain that their tinnitus gets much worse after stressful situations. Still, it's important to note that Professor Pavel Yastrubov's tinnitus retraining therapy, based on implementing the neurophysiological model of tinnitus, is becoming widely accepted and more popular since its first publication in scientific journals and so-called white papers. We take pride in our association with Professor Yastrubov, and based on our research and many years of experience in using TRT in our treatments and therapies, we are staunch supporters who can attest to the exceptional value of his research and work. When you look at the screen and see a picture showing some parts of the brain which can be easily recognized, and based on Professor Pavel Yastrubov's neurophysiological model of tinnitus, are known to be involved in the chronic tinnitus condition or even temporary tinnitus. As we can see in the picture, the central part or element represents Professor Yastrubov's tinnitus model. It is called the limbic system. This part of the brain takes a very active role in presenting tinnitus symptoms to our conscious awareness. It's clearly shown in our pictures due to its significance and its role in the proper functioning of our brain, which sometimes leads to it being referred to as a separate brain. The limbic system is often recognized as the most important part of our brain involved in producing tinnitus symptoms, strength and awareness changes, especially when we discuss severe or catastrophic levels of chronic tinnitus. Once again, as a reminder, when discussing severe or catastrophic levels of tinnitus, we refer to the Tinnitus Handicap Inventory Scale, otherwise known as THI. I encourage you to watch some of our videos where we explain the THI and why it is so significant when discussing tinnitus conditions. As science tells us, the limbic system supports many different functions, including emotion, behavior, motivation, long-term memory, and others. This part of the brain plays a crucial role in various brain functions, especially those related to our basic survival instincts and the fight-or-flight response. As we mentioned earlier, this is also a part of the brain that can make a drastic difference in how our tinnitus is and how it behaves. That's why, as we try to understand the true nature of tinnitus and why it behaves in certain ways, it's essential to know the role and significance of the limbic system. It influences whether we are aware or unaware of the presence of tinnitus, which can range from being extremely annoying and loud to less noticeable, and at the end making it challenging for us to pinpoint. What makes the difference is this understanding that the brain's limbic system 
is responsible for most emotional processing. Individuals with an anxiety disorder are known to have abnormally high activity levels in these areas. Now, please remember that most tinnitus sufferers experience high levels of stress and anxiety caused by tinnitus presence. On the other hand, any additional source of anxiety or stress present in our lives is known to have a dramatic effect on the awareness and strength of tinnitus-related symptoms by increasing what we could call a basic level of the limbic system activity to a much higher level. So what that means for us is that not only stress and anxiety are known to be responsible for 75% of tinnitus onset, but in fact, it's a combination of what we could call a based load of stress, which we can experience in our life daily, in addition to stress and anxiety caused by a tinnitus presence, this mix can be very devastating to the tinnitus sufferer. This is why scientific research tells us that anxiety and tinnitus are linked to many conditions. People with tinnitus often live lives filled with high levels of stress and anxiety, affecting them on a daily basis. Constant tinnitus by itself, which is nothing but this abnormal activity in some parts of the brain, can disturb in many ways an individual's life and cause difficulty sleeping and focusing, but it can also trigger worsening episodes of anxiety and depression, as some other factors can even greatly increase this abnormal activity. So to have this good understanding of the chronic tinnitus condition, we need to remember that our actions can make all the difference. Our attitude toward tinnitus and emotional response can be as negative as expected, or we can try to learn to be calm and more relaxed by understanding the nature of tinnitus. We are not trying to tell you this would be nice and easy to do. There are many tools modern psychology has at its disposal, including widely recommended cognitive behavioral therapy. This is why our clinic has a registered psychologist and psychotherapist working with our tinnitus patients. Also, we are using elements or some of the 12 different therapies proven to be effective and relevant to ensure the success of the tinnitus treatments, especially when we have to work with some other problems, such as chronic anxiety. Based on our current understanding of tinnitus and over 15 years of experience working with thousands of patients, we are convinced that the psychological part of the treatment, often referred to as CBT, is a must element of successful tinnitus therapy. Our patients undergo training and education on how and why they should engage in the expected practices to succeed in working with their minds. We have many patients whom we refer to as distant patients coming from various locations in Canada and the US, especially when local professional tinnitus treatment clinics are not accessible to them. We strive to do our best to share all the required knowledge and expertise so that they can benefit from our therapies as our local patients in Ontario.